Oh. Yeah. Uh, you're going to like this next story then. It's about a man who never gave up on his childhood dream. Mike Duxbury went from being a boss at a business to a farmer, despite being told it could never happen because he is blind. Presenter and gardener Mark Lane explores the difficulties disabled people face when looking for work and how Mike's story has proven agriculture can be accessible. Just over half of disabled people in the UK are employed, compared to over 80% of non-disabled people. And where disabled people are employed, only 10% find it easy to get the adjustments they need in their jobs. As a designer and wheelchair user, I'm passionate about finding solutions to problems that disabled people might face. Now, there have been some really good improvements to workplaces, but some find it a little bit harder to adapt. Farmyards are one of them. Alongside forestry and fishing, agriculture has been revealed as one of the industries least likely to employ disabled people. So I'm looking forward to meeting a man who's not only part of an exclusive and elusive club of disabled farmers, but who has proven that with a little bit of ingenuity and a lot of passion, agriculture can be accessible and inclusive. Mike Duxbury was registered blind at the age of six. In 2021, he started the Inclusive Farm on an acre of rented ground with his partner Ness to become one of the UK's only blind farmers. Why were you so determined to become a farmer? At seven years old, when we were all asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? Yep. I said, just a farmer. Oh. And I was informed, that's not what blind people do. Oh, that's a bit like a red rag, isn't it? Uh, quite. Yeah. So a few years later, and here we are, farming. And Mike's no stranger to changing the way we think about disability. After working on farms throughout his youth, he later got a job at a large mobile phone network, where he was one of the first people to develop text-to-speech software, revolutionising how visually impaired people use technology. The inclusion work that you did in the commercial world, have you brought that into the farming industry? Yes, I have. At the moment, there's nearly a billion people in the world who are registered with some form of disability. Yeah. We need to tap into their skills, their abilities, and bring some of that drive into the farming industry. The, the way this works for me is when I walk through that gate in the morning, mm. I'm no longer blind. Mike has made a number of clever but surprisingly simple adaptations to this farm. The pens are all built in a grid layout so they're easy to navigate. You'll see in a second, there's some matting on the floor here. Matting on the floor alerts anyone on foot or in a wheelchair that they're approaching one of the gates. As a backup, yeah. I've got a different shape fence. Yeah. All of Mike's fences look, and more importantly, feel different, meaning he can use his sense of touch to establish which pen he's in front of. And of course, they're extra wide to easily get in and out of too. So subtleties like that means that I can work on my own, yeah. know where I am, and be safe. It's, it's incredible. And you don't, what I love about it is the fact that as we were walking down, they are different, but you don't notice that they're all different? No. Simple, subtle adjustments on this farm means Mike's talents as a farmer aren't hampered. What Mike has achieved here is incredible. It just goes to show that anywhere can be accessible if you look at it the right way. But setting up the farm is just the beginning. What he's using it for is making the biggest difference. Every week, Inclusive Farm opens its gates to neurodivergent students from a local college who develop skills from hygiene to animal husbandry. <laughs> I'm spending time with Robin, caring for the ducks and chickens that need their wings clipping today. It's just like having your nails done, apparently. Um, do you think there are barriers for neurodivergent students going into the workplace? They are definitely because it's a lot harder for some of them to learn. Yeah. And sometimes they can't focus because noises. So 
helping neurodivergent people go to the workplace like this, it definitely creates the opportunity of them getting used to what routine they'd be into if they got into this type of work. Yeah. It makes you more able to talk out loud, which I know I struggle with, and I know quite a lot of students that also struggle with it. Yeah. Right now, there's a labour shortage in the food and farming community. But if farming was more accessible to all, well, it could just open the door to hundreds of thousands of people with a disability who might love to give it a go. It's a dream Mike is hoping to pursue all across the UK. I've just actually signed a new farm in Scotland. Oh, exciting. And that's 22 acres. Wow. The new project will be based around me working with a group of students to build what is needed. Yeah. So it's a progression from here. But 22 acres of Scottish countryside is a bit different to this one acre plot in Bedfordshire. For that kind of farming, you'd need enormous infrastructure, including some heavy off-road vehicles, traditionally not well suited for the blind, unless you're Mike. What sort of adaptations do, would you be looking for in order to make this work for your place in Scotland? Right. They're, number one, very manoeuvrable. But the beauty is I can add sensors to this, so it can follow, uh, if you like, you put the line down on the floor either side, yep. and it will follow that line, which gives me independence. So are you a good driver then, Mike? Um... <laughs> <laughs> it just so happens Mike was once described as Britain's most experienced blind driver. Hang on, I can't see where I'm going. That's <laughs> better. Oh. Hi, Mike. Hello, there, mate. Bye, Mim. We'll go for a spin. There you go. That's it. Go right a little bit. Mike is proof that disabled people just can't be pigeonholed. The barriers that we face must be lifted and can be with just a little forethought and attention to detail and design. Right a little bit. <laughs> 